Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, uh, we're talking about the Green Bay Packers 2019 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. And if you're new to the channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Follow that stuff out of the way. Let's get to the Packers draft class. So the first pick of the draft for them, of course, was Rashawn Gary, uh, defensive uh, tackle out of uh, Michigan. Uh, when you look at his uh, production data, he had 86.45 solo tackle score, 58.77 sack score, and 66.62 tackle for loss score. Uh, doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, but does hit at least a Pro Bowl threshold at the position in terms of his uh, you know, uh, overall production data. So again, this is him as a defensive tackle though. So that is very important is that this is him as a defensive tackle. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what the Packers are going to do with him just yet. But as a defensive tackle, his production does look good. And when you look at athleticism traits, at least at the edge position, uh, you know, 98.10 in terms of explosion, 99.20 in terms of speed, and 95.36 in terms of flexibility testing. Uh, for the most part, just great athleticism traits in general. Um, his three cone is the only thing that kind of hurts him at the edge position, but if you put him in at defensive tackle, um, it doesn't really affect him that much. So I think the best sort of case for Rashawn Gary is that he gets put in as sort of an interior defensive lineman. If that isn't the case, and I do think there's some concerns, but overall Rashawn Gary definitely is more of a betting on athleticism and betting on him potentially being a really good interior offensive lineman because his data at edge is just not that great uh, when you look at it. So I, I'm basically trying to present you the best sort of picture I can of Rashawn Gary, and, and that's that as an interior defensive lineman, great, you know, very good production, and in terms of his athleticism traits, great all-around athleticism traits in terms of explosion, speed, and flexibility for his size. Then, of course, we get to the next pick of the draft, which, of course, is Darnell Savage Jr. from Maryland. When you look at his production data, 33.20 in terms of solo tackle data, 67.29 in terms of interception data, and uh, 27.66 in terms of, of uh, pass deflection data. Doesn't hit the all-pro thresholds he needs to hit, nor the Pro Bowl thresholds at the position. When you look at the averages in terms of all-pro average, Pro Bowl average, and starter average, he's nowhere near those averages with the exception of interception data. Uh, and when you look at athleticism traits, 84.0 in terms of explosion, 95.80 in terms of speed, and 79.50 in terms of flexibility for his size. So he does have good athleticism traits. He doesn't hit the all-pro Pro Bowl threshold when it comes to flexibility testing, but he does have good explosion and good speed traits. And he's just a great all-around athlete. Uh, bottom line, when it comes to a guy like this, I think Darnell Savage Jr. has some bust potential because of his production data. So, like, he's he's someone that I, I don't, like, he, he didn't have the production traits. He didn't have the production traits of Ed Reed. He didn't have the production traits uh, of Earl Thomas. Uh, you know, like he didn't have the production traits of a Kevin Bayard even. You know, so he's he's just someone that I think uh, may take a year to really develop. But I do think that the traits are here for him to become a starter. But I think anything more than that will definitely take um, some more time and development for him. Uh, because he just doesn't quite have the production traits on paper to suggest him becoming a high quality safety at the next level. Then, of course, we get to uh, Elton Jenkins. Uh, center, center prospect out of Mississippi State. When you look at his athleticism trait, 68.68 in terms of explosiveness, 83.35 in terms of speed, and 77.60 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't quite hit all the all-pro thresholds at the center position for the majority of centers, but he does hit at least the Pro Bowl thresholds and the starter thresholds. And when you look at the averages at the position, doesn't hit the all-pro average, but definitely hits above the Pro Bowl average and starter average at the position. So, Elton Jenkins has the sort of athleticism traits to be an above average center at the NFL level, which I think is all that you're really looking for in a guy like him. Then, of course, we get to Jay Sternberger, tight end out of Texas A&M as well. 87.38 in terms of production data, hits above the all pro threshold and pro bowl threshold of the position. When you look at the averages, doesn't hit above the all pro average, but does hit above the pro bowl average and starter average. And when you look at athleticism traits, 34.58 in terms of explosion, 58.58 in terms of speed, and 64.14 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't hit above the starter averages in terms of explosion and speed. But I do think there's a lot of positives here. I think the production is great. I think that he has a chance to become a starting tight end. I just don't think that he's ever going to become an elite tight end at the NFL level. But definitely good traits all around to become a starting tight end. 
Then, of course, you get to uh, Kingsley Kiki, uh, defensive tackle. Uh, when you look at his uh, production data, 62.32 in terms of, of uh, solo tackle data, 80.95 in terms of uh, sack data, and 65.62 in terms of his... Uh, in terms of his um, uh, TFL data, uh, doesn't hit the All Pro thresholds or Pro Bowl thresholds, but does hit at least above the starter thresholds of the position. And when you look at the averages, he is lacking in terms of solo tackle data and TFL data, but still good all around data. And in terms of athleticism traits, 61.84 in terms of explosion, 66.51 in terms of speed, and 69.38 in terms of flexibility. And this is based on the averages at the defensive tackle position. Doesn't quite hit the uh, all pro slash pro bowl average uh, in terms of his uh, explosion, speed, or flexibility. But definitely is very close to near the starter averages at the position. So I think Kiki has a, definitely a good chance to become a starting defensive tackle. But not necessarily an elite defensive tackle based on his athleticism traits and his production traits. Then of course we get to Kadar Holloman, uh, cornerback. Uh, when you look at his uh, production data, 38.05 in terms of solo tackle data and 80.73 in terms of pass selection data, uh, doesn't quite hit all the areas he needs to hit in terms of solo tackle data, but definitely hits all the areas he needs to hit in terms of pass selection data in terms of high quality outcomes. So he looks more like a starter than an all pro such pro bowl player. And when you look at athleticism traits, 67.92 in terms of explosion, 86.89 in terms of speed, and 76 in terms of his flexibility testing. So his uh, all around Athleticism traits look like a pro bowler to almost close to all pro player based on his athleticism traits, but his production traits are definitely a little bit worrisome, especially due to his level of competition because he was productive, but he wasn't like that productive at Ohio State. So there's definitely some question marks there. So I think there's a very good chance he becomes a long-term starter, maybe becomes a pro bowler down the line if he really develops, but that's the sort of bottom line with Holloman. Then, of course, you get to Dexter Williams, running back out of Notre Dame, 33 in terms of his market share production score. Doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, Pro Bowl threshold, or five-time Pro Bowl threshold, or three-time Pro Bowl threshold. Uh, when you look at the average, it doesn't hit above the all-pro average or the Pro Bowl average or starter average at the running back position. And in terms of athleticism traits, 82.04 in terms of uh, explosion, 47.52 in terms of speed, and 71.45 in terms of uh, flexibility traits. Uh, he does have at least one above average or, or all pro versus pro bowl athleticism trait in terms of explosion and does have a potential to become a starter uh, but i think more likely based on his production traits that he's going to be more of a backup slash rotational guy and then the last pick is ty summers linebacker out of tcu based on his production data 26.97 in terms of solo tackle data doesn't hit the all pro threshold pro bowl threshold but does hit at least above the starter threshold or, and in terms of the average, is nowhere near the averages, so his production is very, very suspect. But based on athleticism traits, 87.80 in terms of explosion, 98.41 in terms of speed, and 92.40 in terms of flexibility, essentially has all pro athleticism traits at the position, uh, but his production is just not that amazing. So I think bottom line when it comes to Ty Summers is this is someone I think has a good chance to become a... Uh, you know, uh, a good special teamer and maybe someone who develops into a starter based on his athleticism, athleticism traits, but not someone that I think is going to be great out, out of the box. You know, like he's going to be someone I think is going to have to take some time to develop if you think he's going to become a, a consistently good contributor on this team. So overall, when you look at the Green Bay Packers draft class, I think it's a good class. It is a bit of a mixed bag. There's not one player in this class that I can point to and go, oh yeah, he's going to be an elite player. Uh, Rashawn Gary is close to that, but again, I think there's a lot of... Uh, Rashawn Gary needs to be put in the right situation. You know, like I think he has to go to the right team. I think this team could definitely be that team, but I think he's, he's someone that could become elite, but he definitely needs some coaching. He definitely needs some time to develop. So I think he's going to be like a one to two year sort of guy where if after one to two years, if he hasn't really developed, then you just kind of miss the mark on him. Uh, I think, but again, I think most of the players in this draft class, I think a lot of them are going to be starters to contributors, but I don't really see any one player who's going to be like an elite, elite player based in their overall production or athleticism traits on paper. 
So I think this is a good class, but I just don't think it's a great class. Um, and most of the player, I mean, most of the teams this year didn't really have great classes, so don't feel too bad about that. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification bell in case you want to be reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.